In this video, I want to show you how I'm going to make a damp box, a plaster damp box, by using a plastic bin and poured plaster. So this is a damp box that I made a long, long time ago. And um, you can store uh, pieces on damp plaster for months on end. Uh, you just periodically check the plaster. If it feels a little dry, you can add a little bit of moisture, uh, you know, add some water to it and it absorbs it. But uh, these are some leather hard handles that I made some, some time ago. In fact, they're maybe even a little bit on the plastic side of leather hard. And um, the damp box will keep them in good condition for a really long time. So if I don't get around to using them for a month, it's totally fine. So this is my damp box. It's a large damp box that I'm making. Um, in a previous video, I had mixed up some plaster, but I probably only have like three quarters of an inch in there. I'm gonna add a little bit more to the top. And uh, I just wanted to show you um, how I would go about doing it. Normally, I would pour the plaster for a damp box in one uh, pouring session. But on a previous video, I was making some hump molds and I had a little bit of extra plaster. So I started off this plaster um, box already by dumping uh, an inch or so of my leftover plaster in the bottom. And now I'll continue. Just like in the preview, previous video, I am using pottery plaster number one. And I am also using a respirator uh, whenever you're dealing with the dry powdered uh, plaster. You wanna make sure that you're keeping it out of your lungs, so use a respirator. Once I have all of the plaster incorporated into the water, then I can take the respirator back off again. Now, I don't have very much water in the bottom. I only have probably like two to three inches, so I'm gonna sprinkle the plaster, just kind of sprinkle it as you go. And it takes a while because the plaster is uh, absorbing the water as you sprinkle. You try to sprinkle so you don't have large clumps that start forming. And I should mention this is cool water that I'm using. Not warm, not hot, because you want the chemical reaction to happen evenly. And if it's hot, you might suddenly, it, it goes a lot faster and it's easier to get clumps. All right, now, you know that you're ready to mix the plaster when you can look in there and you see that the plaster is a little mountain that hasn't quite fallen apart and broken. When you've reached the mountain state, stop putting in the plaster and then you're gonna start mixing. Now, I should have mentioned I'm mixing with my hand that has a glove on it and uh, the, sh the glove was short so I taped some plastic onto my arm to hopefully keep the plaster uh, from going down in the glove. You don't have to wear gloves, but I prefer not to have my skin dried out so much because it's very, very drying. All right, now that the plaster has been incorporated, I can take off my respirator because once it's moist, you're not getting dust all over. When I put the plaster bag away, I'll put my respirator back on because just moving it will cause a lot of dust to go up in the air. Oh, and I do normally do this outside, but it's just pouring rain today. So I'm doing it inside, but I have my room ventilation on. So it is uh, uh, venting out any of the uh, debris and stuff in the room. So as I'm mixing, I'm just moving my fingers around. The goal is to mix and keep it in suspension, but I'm mixing gently. I don't want to incorporate air into this. One of the uh, things that you 
definitely want to do is mix it gently by hand. Occasionally I've had people that say, hey, can you mix it with a, like a drill mixer, like I might mix a glaze? And the answer would be no, because if you incorporate a bunch of air bubbles, you can end up by having a little bit of trouble with it. So gently, gently, gently. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna mix this up and uh, I'll come back when it's ready to pour out. This is probably gonna take me about, I would estimate about 15 minutes. And here I'm just kind of wrapping the side of the bucket to help to release some air bubbles that might be in there. I do have my bucket lined with plastic, so uh, it'll be easier to clean up. I'm just going to throw away the plastic bag instead of having to clean out a bucket um, and get plaster in my drain. I try to do whatever I can to avoid getting any plaster in the drain, so I do what I can to make things disposable. That, the plaster that I have in here is just actually a, a little too thin for my comfort. I'm afraid that um, if I left it like this, that it might be prone to cracking if we kind of move the bin around a little bit too vigorously. So um, that's why I had to mix up a little bit more because I had used most of it in my other molds and I had a little bit left and I thought, well, I'll just dump it in here. But um, to add to it, I'm going to take and roughen up the surface like I'm scoring for um, clay. So I'm going to make some aggressive lines in here. And that way when I pour the new plaster over, it's really going to settle in there and adhere well. Um, if this were like a, a really nice straight mold or something, I would try to do it all in one pour. But since this is going to stay in the plastic bin, I'm not terribly concerned about it. So here's what the roughening up of the surface looks like. So that is ready to accept the plaster. The plaster just needs a few more minutes before I can pour it in on top. While this is still very, very liquidy, I'm gonna go ahead and pour a bonding coat here between the, the old and the new plaster. I like to make sure that the, I like to make sure that it gets really incorporated into the little lines, the grooves. And then I'm gonna just, kind of tap it because there were some air bubbles down in there and I want to make sure that the air bubbles are coming up. And now for the next couple of minutes, um, to get that bonding coat to really adhere, I'm going to tap my bin gently, uh, just keep tapping it on the table to get the air bubbles to come up and that will help it to bond a little bit more as the rest of the plaster is setting up still. All right, we're at right about 15 minutes. And I'm gonna take the remainder of this and gently pour it on top of the light bonding coat that I put in there. And again, I wanna do this gently because I do want to try to avoid the formation of air bubbles if possible. There we go. Now I have about an inch and a half to two inches of plaster in the bottom of this. And I am gonna tap it to make sure it is level. And again, clean up. I'm using a lot of disposable things, paper towels, that sort of stuff. I'll be throwing away the bag that's in the uh, bucket as well. Well, looks like my glove failed a little bit. Okay, 
And here is the plaster in the damp box that I poured and it has set up. I am going to go ahead and kind of smooth this out as well. I'm just gonna take the scrubber pad over it so if there's any little imperfections, wiggly areas, it'll smooth it out. And then I'll take a sponge over it as well. Okay, nice smooth surface for my damp box. A damp box can last you for years in your studio life. And as a side note, if you ever happen to get maybe a little bit of mold or mildew in it, you can take a diluted mixture of a little bit of bleach and water and spritz it over the plaster, not on your clay, and that will help get rid of the mold.